Hey traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at Alibaba. Actually looking at the whole Chinese sector as far as mega caps are concerned and uh, raising a couple of flags and um, giving my opinion as to what I would do with my own trades. And also somewhere along this video, if I can figure it out, I'm going to put a card that's going to pop up somewhere on the screen, probably on the upper right, where you can click and request your own videos. And if that works and don't get bombarded, I'll start going down the list one by one, um, or at least get the ones that get the most responses. Um, it's just a simple link to a, a Google form, nothing nefarious about it. Uh, no commitments, of course, and it's all free on this channel. So click and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and uh, put the alert um, notification on. Now back to what's going on here. First of all, today is 816 Monday. <laughs> Another record day. So it started out nasty. By nasty, I mean minus 0.8%, minus 1% on the S&P. And then, boom, somebody hit. Uh, they forgot that it was Monday and they needed to be green and new new highs. And and it and and the the, the rebound was incredibly uh, strong and let me see here give you a visualization of it. So the morning <laughs> we gapped down and then immediately said nope we were wrong let's go new highs. Now that did not happen with um, let's go with the FXI you know that's the ETF they gapped down and they got stuck. If you look at K Web got gapped down stuck Baba same deal Baidu probably worse yeah uh, Baidu made the last the low at the last the, the next elastic so not the same story between the SPY and um, the rest of the Chinese stocks that should be doing well and we'll talk about that in a second so here's the problem for me so first of all if you listen to anybody any expert out there um, that tells you that they're confident with what they're saying they're full of crap Nobody should be confident in anything. So I've seen some stuff here that I've never seen before. And don't take my word for it. Let's go find out. So this is the FXI and the SPY on one screen. All right, the line is the FXI. Look how they diverted. They diverged um, early March. If you remember, March was started very painful for the um, tech in the US we had a correction that was a legitimate correction in the Nasdaq the pain was incredible and it was like three or four days and it ended on the fifth and the eighth and then our markets in the US did this whereas the Chinese market did that so clear divergence which I've never seen before you saying, oh it's happened before not that I remember this is five years you can see they move in tandem you know up and even during the tariff wars with um, during the Trump administration the headlines move both markets the same way. Maybe we've had a couple of ticks here and there that, that they diverged, but not like this. One down, one up. One is breaking records. One cannot stop breaking bad records. And on good news. So what do I mean by that? If you listen to the companies themselves, their PLs are great. What's not great is what's going on politically. So the question marks. So what do I do? What does that mean for me who is trying to make a buck trading these uh, stocks. So if you tried to catch a falling knife in Alibaba, you lost a few digits. It turned out to be a machete with about 12 inch blade and a two inch handle. You lost a finger or two. Um, I'm, I tried to catch the falling knife recently with the FXI with uh, limited options exposure and the TME. So those two are red. So the decision comes a, if I'm already read in something, do I cut the, um, you know, cut it loose? Um, th that depends on personal preference. So if my tolerance for pain hit its level, and I should have that level before I take the trade, I'll say, okay, if I risk a thousand dollars, I'm willing to lose two hundred, and then I'm out. I'm making these numbers up. Uh, some people will say, no, I want twenty-five percent or ten percent. Somebody else would say, if it hits a certain level, I'm out, and that's where I'm going to come in. So if I added recently. I have no reason to add it now, to add to my risk now. Um, in Alibaba's perspective, this candle on 726 was telling. The market fell incredibly fast and then recovered incredibly fast that day. Now it spent the next three days, uh, um, weeks, I'm sorry, three weeks. This is one week worth of data. So there were, I'll show you how it played out. There's one funny candle in there. Um, it spent the next three weeks pricing that out that funny candle so for me from a trading perspective this should be support unless it fails and then 
what I have question marks so I don't add until I see the resolution of that so Baba has the advantage of adding these two candles right below it and this whole mess of action down here this is months of consolidation okay wide but it's a lot of volume so it's cushion down here unless the markets crash this should hold up should hold up but I could have probably said the same thing here but it didn't but here we are um, so FX uh, let me go to a daily and see if we can point out that funny candle there this one so out of the blue we have this boom and then an immediate rejection and then it served as a base unfortunately the seller stepped up like I would expect them to and they are testing that candle again all right so step one is stop making new lows so if that's, if that's lost then whatever is going on continues and this descending channel continues and the beatings will continue until the morale improves so that's a kind of a joke I saw once on the t-shirt so um, I don't do anything until I find out what happens with 179 let's 179 six okay um, I don't have a reason to add to my risk I didn't know and I don't know anything new um, so if I wanted to stop out it's okay but I'll I'm so close I'll wait it out down three percent today on an incredibly bullish day you say Nick the scoreboard wasn't that bullish it was like barely up yeah but you saw from what hole so it was a, a one plus percent rally in in matter of minutes basically uh, with ferociousness having said that the SVX this week has a lot of downside pressure from the open interest so me interpreting the action the market makers need some sort of a whoosh lower maybe this was it this morning I don't know but I would expect it to have been bigger um, this is a monthly expiration week probably triple witching or something like that I Wall Street want to put a tag to it on Friday so what does that mean it means big money can move either way so we expect the unexpected so don't dig both heels in expect no thinking you know what what's up we don't, we don't know I don't want to cuss YouTube will block my video we don't know crap about crap okay I know that I'm missing a piece of the a puzzle and if I don't admit it then I'm living in a bubble all right so what about Baidu Baidu what I don't like about Baidu is that it lost its 726 line that funny candle with Baidu is well below it so that already raises the question of like what the heck is going on I don't know so I don't do that FXI has not it resembles Baba boom funny candle and it's still in a tight batch in box in in fact look you can draw a box around this and trade that meaning as long as it's ping-ponging inside the box nothing's gonna happen but as soon as it leaves one side or the other some stuff are gonna happen so maybe they test this maybe they don't and if they pop to 44 expect sellers to show up into 45 and 46 and most importantly at 4740 if this if any rally gets me out of trouble I would bail okay that's my personal opinion so there's another one called Asher that is kind of wonky to trade so if you want to try that but it's a weird ETF I've used it a few times but the options are kind of weird FXI is liquid enough fills fast enough mirrors Baba which in my opinion is the representation of it so why am I all excited about the company well I look at the P&L and I was like what the f you know what is going on first of all where is it Baba I was like where's the P&L okay here we go all right you be the judge not me 38 billion in revenues in 2017 120 billion now okay so that's an incredible growth rate from under 10 billion to 22 point something billion in net income uh, statistically because of the drubbing it just took it's down to four uh, price to sales that's in the Amazon level nothing nobody else is this cheap not Apple not anybody else uh, 23 PE that's like bank levels yeah and it grows way faster than banks correct and uh, so the company is delivering healthy numbers for crying out loud they deliver 80 billion 70 some some billion in one day on 11 11 which is coming this soon enough all right so we don't know what the government has in store for it so I rely on the charts the uh, agnostic telltale uh, don't fight the tape price is truth all of these come from the fact that this is actual history and machines will look to that with a little asterisk now for political <laughs> lenience I guess so first level 179.6 I want to see that hold if it doesn't uh oh in theory much lower prices are coming however there are two candles here that I can look to which is 
170 rounding. This is almost perfect, right? And if I scroll back, that was the base for all of this. So let me go to a monthly candle. Maybe we can learn something from that. This uh, like bunches up the price action. So right here, it came out of the box and fell apart in 2014. It took it months and months and months to finally break out from it, right? So broke out here, big, huge rally, came back. These are months those candles are very very bullish that's a flat floor and it's not surprising to do it right above here so prior resistance which was the breakout became support and they never looked back rinse and repeat here but they already lost it around 200 but if you look at this cluster here right that's where you can draw a box and say okay if this was wrong too low if this was wrong too high some somewhere in the middle lies the truth this is literally where we're at somewhere in the middle and if you look left if you don't know much about volume profiles you should learn them these mountains you have here that's these volume bars only at what price level they happened so it tells me that the busiest place was down here at $84 clearly that's not relevant right now the second busiest place and third are up here which is where it's at just below that so that's support but this is a dynamic look so if I zoom in that look should change and the more recent action then the, the it, it would be more relevant to current price action but this is a visual representation of if too low is wrong too high is wrong somewhere in the middle lies the truth and we're exactly I'm curious is this the 50% Fibonacci 187.80 is the 50% Fibonacci let's take all this mess where is it now 182.70 so right in the halfway mark of its entire lifeline uh, on Wall Street so when you have a giant rally and you give back half of it normal price action how it's unfolding in this market is not normal because everything is running 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 and not these guys so I'm surprised to see the Chinese government punish them so harshly because that you, you I've read a headline that it's in our heads in the US that China is in competition with us maybe it is I mean this is this hints to it they're willing to beat up their own stars at the expense of fading behind the rest of the world as far as stock prices are concerned to get whatever they're trying to get done in, in I'm not an expert there so I don't want to criticize because I have no clue what they're doing so but from a trading perspective there are more questions than answered unless you just Put hard lines on the chart and hold yourself to it. Price is truth. It's unfolding in front of me, regardless of whether I believe they're gems or not. Lower highs, lower lows. This continues until the behavior changes. Okay, so bounce. If not, lower we're going, and 160 could be in the cards. Do I add here? No, not for me. Do I stop out? Maybe that depends on personal preference. If I've hit my stop out level, I should stop out. Some people hit on levels. Um, like if it goes below 180 maybe I'll stop myself out or 179 or some people will go on if I'm down 20% I'm out that's personal preference and I'm not telling anybody how to trade here this is not my position this is just to tell you how I look at a chart and uh, basically for educational purposes the charts matter they matter even more when we have no clue what's going on in the political venue because those guys are crazy guys and gals all politicians all over the world I've lived in many places in this world and they never cease to amaze me at how destructive they're willing to do to get the job done whatever holistically they think the end result is the the means what is that they say the end does justify the means in their book and you see some incredible things going on anyway off topic it is what it is uh, again sign up for the channel and find that card if you didn't find it it's somewhere in there if you want your own vi videos uh, reviewed